good evening, everyone. I'll just uh, allow a couple minutes as everybody gets in and connected, and we'll start in about uh, 30 seconds. So stay, stay tuned. All right, well, good evening and welcome to the National Engineering Month session on creativity and design. Uh, my name is Stephanie Thompson and uh, a few years ago I started a social enterprise uh, aimed at connecting more women to STEM and STEM support networks. So over the past several years I've run uh, over you know, 12 or 13 workshops uh, that I've called Women in STEM Experiences and worked with young women who are um, at the beginning of their career or at a part in their career where they need to have the right support as they uh, try to pursue uh, their career goals. This month, I'm really excited to partner with uh, National Engineering Month and OSFI, uh, as well as connecting you to some of the incredible talent that I have here in Niagara for Brock University's Makerspace. So our agenda for tonight is, uh, is, is nice and jam-packed. Uh, we'll start right on time, and uh, from 6.15 to 6.30, we're going to go into Brock University's uh, engineering new program, and then our uh, keynote workshop presenter, Tabitha Lewis, will take over at 6.30 uh, to bring us through what we're all here for is creativity and design, a cry cut workshop. Um, then we'll have a little bit of time to do a wrap up at the end, ask questions, get to know a little bit more about the people and players who are part of this agenda and uh, hopefully share some, uh, some connectivity over the subject. Uh, so just to get things started, um, I'd like to begin with our land acknowledgement. Uh, so myself, uh, Tabitha, Betty and Cheng, who you'll meet in a few slides, we're all coming to you from the Niagara region. So the land that we gather on here is traditional territory of the Anishinaabe and the Haudenosaunee people. Um, we pay our respects to the elders of the past, the present and emerging, and as settlers, we'd like to be grateful of the opportunity to live, work, and play in this territory. So as I've said before, I'm uh, STEM by Steph, and I'm bringing to you um, kind of a diverse background of things that I like to think of made me, um, you know, able to talk to you about the subject, which is really breaking down uh, goals and non-traditional um, ways of thinking that our society has. As a parent um, of Amelia, you know, I've got the vested interest in bringing more girls and creating a world that she's going to grow up in that I'm going to be proud of. I've had 20 years of professional engineering at a, a large automotive company. And so not only in uh, an engineering space, but also working in manufacturing, which uh, is another non-traditional domain. Um, I've done lots of volunteering, you know, focus more 10 years in first robotics, if anybody's been part of the high school program. Uh, an excellent way to get connected to STEM. But I've also worked in things like uh, advisory councils for girls. And if there's a STEM program out there, I've at least tried to research it and figure out how well they run. Because uh, I want to connect to more awesome women. And you'll find that a lot of these organizations are run by really strong, great women. Um, a few years ago, I really saw a gap in some of the um, advantages or programs aimed at kind of the adult grown-up women. And so I created these types of workshops under you know, STEM by Steph or Women in STEM Experiences to try to fill in the pipeline that supports women accessing STEM information. Uh, in the last couple of years, I've had some really great uh, awards given to me as the uh, top 100 most powerful women in Canada by the WXN Corporation. So this is the creativity and design workshop. Um, the idea of, of creativity is, uh, you know, kind of the, the, the theme under which we're going to be looking at. And so I want to take a little bit of time to look at why is diversity important? So if you guys could take a pen or paper or sketch it on your computer, or even just think of something in your head. I want you to think about a dog and I want you to think about a house. And I want you to draw or make or create or sketch or think about what you think those two ideas are. Are. So I'll give you about 15 seconds, 20 seconds. Doesn't have to be fancy, just has to be really, uh, really quick and just your first instinct of what it down. All right, that's awesome. All right. So um, is anybody going to share screens or anybody want to <laughs> produce it? Um, and if not, I just want to think about no matter what you had written or drawn. 
each person here has created something unique to them. They're all gonna be different. If you have a dog, you probably drew the one that you own. Uh, if you had one growing up, that's probably the one that came to your mind. If you've never had a dog or don't know what a dog is, you know, maybe you do something that is not the same recognizable as other people. And the same with the house. You know, in my head, I think of a house as the one I grew up in. You know, it's got uh, two stories. It's, you know, got a front door. We had four kids. And so uh, there's a lot of people sharing bedrooms in, the, in a three bedroom house. And so the house of what you represent is, is unique to you. And it, it comes a lot from your experiences, from childhood, from what you've uh, made of yourself or the way you live today. And I think that's really the essence of why diversity is important is because no matter what I use is those two words, everybody that's listening to the presentation today is going to have a different sense. Your background, your history, your preferences, all of these things add into uh, uh, what is uh, unique to you and the different perspectives are really important. And truly how we get the best design solutions really come from you as an individual uh, and your set of experiences. So what's really powerful about trying to connect women in this work that I do is that I work in very non-traditional roles where there, you look around the room and there's not as many of us as you'd like to be. And as the world keeps changing, if you're a university student, you'll probably see a lot more women in universities as they push to get you know, 30 by 30. So that's 30% women enrollment by 2030. Um, and you'll see a lot of programs at elementary and high school looking to connect women to these programs. And so there's a real sense of, of power in what we're trying to do. And I want to keep the, the chat going. Um, so here is all right, great. I'm just look at the chat now. Thank you. The dog, the cats, the dog house. Love it. Love the sharing of that uh, connection. Perfect. All right, so I want to talk a little bit about this project. This came out, this design element that I saw uh, July of 2021 is when the article first came out. So somebody has designed uh, through your camera, uh, Brickett's AI camera, which scans your Lego and suggests things to build. And what I love about this is it's a really recent kind of application of design. You know, I think we think backwards and, you know, making something, building something that is in our hands and tangible, but as we know, so much of the design today comes from software and comes from what we can see in, in, in the virtual space. So uh, this design experiment for thing, you know, there's some great pros to it. You know, it's easy to use. Um, it takes the materials that you have and suggests things to build. It gives you, um, you know, kind of takes the chaos out of the process and allows you to see what's there. And I think from a designer, if you're, you were the one that created this app, you'd be pretty proud of yourself. You'd think of all the cool stuff that you could teach kids to make. But in anything, you know, there's always the con side. And for me, as I read through this, and I've shared this example in some of my workshops before, the cons that come out of it is that you can't think of all the ways that people are gonna use this product. So for example, if you had, um, a disability where you had visual impairments or challenges, you know, those types of products don't appeal to you. Um, as somebody who grew up in kind of the Lego building era, you know, if you're a parent, you might be cringing at the fact that, you know, we kind of give answers to kids nowadays rather than, than let them uh, figure things out on their own. And so designing and, and, and creativity of all products that come out today um, really is, uh, in, in an essence, not just a one person job, but really builds into inclusion of what needs to happen. So a, a designer will create a product. Is it good? Is it bad? Will society benefit from it? Um, in many cases, you know, it's causing us as engineers and as those who live in society to really put that in perspective by asking ourselves the question, you know, what are the true pros and cons of the content that we're in some cases, not controlling to our kids or not being able to um, have a discussion about. And so I think this is a really powerful example uh, of, of design. So I wanted to bring us all together today. I'm really excited about uh, our introduction welcome keynote from Brock University, because they're gonna talk a lot about how inclusivity and how they're bringing that into the forefront of a new engineering program at Brock University. And then following that up with uh, the content of the, of the workshop with Tabitha. And so as we all share that experience together, I'm really happy that we're going to be able to do that 
uh, together tonight. All right, I probably hit the advanced button four times. There we go, let's hope it stays. All right, well, thank you. So I'm gonna introduce Betty and Shen from the uh, Brock University Department of Engineering. Betty is the interim chair of the new department uh, at Brock and a professor of computer science specializing in art um, artificial intelligence. She's the co-founder and co-director of the Bio-Inspirational Computer Intelligence Research Group at Brock. She obtained a double major undergraduate in mathematics and statistics and computer science minor from Jomo Kiata University of Agriculture and Technology, Nairobi, Kenya. Betty received her master's of PhD degree specializing in intelligence systems from the Department of Information Engineering at the University of Rikus, Okinawa, Japan. Betty speaks five languages and enjoys learning different cultures and food. She studies Japanese language at Osaki University of Foreign Studies. She loves to cook, garden, nature walks with her two daughters and her husband, as well as spending time with her friends. And I hope one day she will count me among them and a good laugh because she's awesome. And she will be bringing with her to the conversation, Dr. Shen, who has received her PhD and degree in electrical engineering from Carleton University, sorry, electrical and computer engineering from Carleton. Her um, uh, MEng from research degree in electrical engineering from, from the University of Wollongong in Australia, and her BEng in mechanical engineering and automation from um, Huazhong University of Science and Technology in China. Uh, in 2012 till 14, she held a research position at um, Huawei Technologies of Canada in Ottawa as an NSERC researcher and an R&D fellow. Uh, in uh, 2014 to 21, she was a lecturer and a press, uh, professor of assistant professor with the James Watt School of Engineering at the University of Glasgow. And currently, she's an associate professor at Brock University um, in Canada. From a personal side, she loves Latin, dances, Zumba, and cooking, and playing with her five year old son, who is a train aficionado. So, Welcome both to Betty and Shen, and thank you for uh, bringing us into the discussion on engineering and what you guys are working at at Brock. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for that uh, warm introduction. Um, I'm gonna. I'm very happy to be here. Yesterday was International Women's Day. Uh, I I'd like to say a belated Happy International Women's Day, and uh, so we are gonna talk about. Um, Brock engineering. But before that, um, I know that Stephanie joked and said, is there anything else you can say to make your presentation a little more informal? Thank you, Stephanie, for giving us all the geeky introduction. And I use the word geeky because those days people used to think that it's bad. I just want to say to all the girls uh, and women in this meeting, when anybody says I look or sound like a geek, I consider that to be um, a very good compliment and uh, I, I wear that very well and um, I just want to say that um, uh, it is really an honor to be in this meeting with Sheng who is uh, our newest uh, one of our newest and the, the the only full hire of engineering at Brock I'll give you a small breakdown of what we have at Brock what we are thinking of introducing as far as uh, engineering at Brock is concerned and before I do that I'm gonna let Sheng go first, and then I can go next because I may give some general thoughts about where we have uh, come from as far as engineering is concerned. We've just started and where we are headed. So Sheng, could you please take over first? Thank you, Betty. Um, it was great to, uh, to be here. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, yeah. So because I know everybody's tired, so I, I just to show you guys some pictures and I uh, want to share you guys like my career journey until now. Um, so you can see some pictures. So um, yeah, so the first one, this one is actually that's the place I grew up. So it is a campus and my parents' apartment is somewhere just actually another side of this um, street. So that's, um, that's where I grew up and and as uh, Stefan said, after that, I went to Huajun University of Science and Technology, did my undergraduate. 
So it was, uh, uh, it's very close to my home, just a walk distance every day. And after that, as you can see here, so actually this is, um, so this is a great wall. Uh, so you can see this, uh, it's, that day is pretty foggy. So you pretty much cannot see much. So, um, and so this is actually a bird nest uh, stadium. So the in Beijing, so those built uh, to host Beijing Olympic games. So this is me. And then, so after that, uh, I actually, after I finished my undergraduate, so I decided to go to um, Australia and to do my master's degree. So um, as you can see here, this is a cro crawler bear. Um, yeah, so I have a couple of other pictures, which uh, like actually I hold crawler bear. So if you, if you pay like a 20 uh, Canadian dollars or something like, and you actually have the chance just to hold the bell in your hands and I can, um, it, that's pretty cool. And this picture actually I took, took it um, when I attend a second international conference. So in, in Melbourne, so it's actually pretty uh, good opportunity for me because it's actually pretty real because for a master student, I attend the three conference, like international conference um, during, my, uh, during my study. So um, during my uh, study, I was, I was also very active to attend the different activities. So this picture actually I took, um, so it's a national, it's a national like a graduate student ball. So as you can see here, this is actually a, a former prime minister of Australia. So this, uh, he has a lots of bodyguard. So it's, so to, took it um, that time. And so this picture actually I took it like, um, so the third conference, international conference I attended when I was doing my master's degree. So this is a wave rock. So I attend the conference in Perth, Australia. And um, that time actually I got the best paper award. So I also got like 500 uh, US dollar for the award. So it's actually pretty good because I can live in a better hotel and I also spend money to tour around um, yeah, because those days I was a very poor student. Um, was actually pretty cool. Um, so uh, this is a picture I took when it was um, like my graduation day. So I was very happy it's, as you can see here at University of Wollongong. Wollongong means actually beach city. So, um, so that in that city, we have lots of nice beach and normally uh, rich people live on the mountain and the poor people um, near the beach. So it's actually pretty nice. Um, so I live like far, like a five minutes walk distance from the beach. Um, so after I finished my master's, I decided to um, come to Canada to do my PhD. Uh, so um, I did my, oh, actually I forgot to mention. So my master's degree is, I designed the whole system. So it's called one is ad hoc networks. So it's kind of like, imagine in your home, right? So we have a different temperature sensors. So for example, we have a different sensors. They can actually measure the temperature. And then we, we can collect this data and we can collect the humidity. So then we can decide, okay, can, do we need to turn the fan on? Do we, do we turn the like humidity uh, like, or dehumidifier? Um, so they actually all the system is automatically. So it's actually I designed the whole like sensor systems and also like the sensor will communicate with controller. So controller will decide, okay, it's the time to return the fan on or we actually should be turn the humidity uh, on, so for example. And so this is a picture I took in, uh, in Ottawa. So that's the place I did my uh, PhD. So I did my PhD at Carleton University. As you can see here, this is Dulles Lake. It's actually pretty beautiful. Um, so this is the picture I took um, one of the conference I attend uh, in San Jose, um, California. So as you can see here, this is a robot. It's actually pretty cool. So one of the things, the good thing about uh, San, Francisco, uh, San Jose is that because a lot of times, like they host a lot of conferences. And then during the conferences, actually the school kids are like, like people like you, they can go to attend the conference. So like the, as a school tour, so they can talk to the, um, because they have lots of demos from different companies. So they actually can go to talk to them and to can like ask questions and uh, you know, the presenters or even the companies and they can have the conversation. So they can start 
to talk to the com com company is actually a very, very early stage of their career or like when even they are just like um, primary school kids. So which is actually pretty good. That's probably the one of the reason they actually, they generate a lot of uh, good engineers. So this is a me, as you can see, actually I'm, I'm on, on the horse. Um, yeah, and so like, I was actually very enjoying horse riding, but I'm not good at it. Um, so this is actually, I was on the tractor. So my, actually I have, uh, so it's my, my husband, uncle. So he live like two hours away from Toronto. So it's, it's actually pretty cool to visit him. He has a lot of uh, cows. Um, and those is, this is a sign like I, um, so go engineering go. So that when I was at Carlton, I was very active to, um, to promote engineering to, uh, to girls. So this is a, um, like a sign in 2009. And so this picture I took in 2012. So when I finished, I got my PhD degree. So my PhD degree was in electrical and computer engineering. So I was look at, okay, so how could we um, save energy? So for example, for the cellular networks, right? So how could we save energy, one thing? And also another thing is how could, so when you guys use a cell phone, right? So how could you like can download a lot of data or lots of pictures and you don't feel the delay. So like can get it quickly. And also one of the things I look at, I was looking at is how could we um, like design the price for the electricity because now you know like different times, like, like electricity, they have different price. So we will look at how could we propose different time strategy. So like different time, for example, you know, during the weekend, right? During the weekdays, the electricity is different, right? So um, I'm not quite sure how many of you actually look at um, the electricity price before you decide, okay, when do we, we should we wash, uh, you wash my clothes, when should we, um, you know, um, like if some people have a EV, so when, when do we should charge our, our EV um, cars, for example. Yeah, so that's mainly my research. Um, and so after I finished my PhD and I was doing a postdoc at Huawei and also at the same time, I, I was a lecturer at like um, instructor at Carlton. So uh, this picture I took um, during the day, like actually my five uh, undergraduate student doing their demo for their final year projects. So they actually have, they made a very uh, cool sign. They call themselves sociable. So the project is related to called um, social wellness um, routing protocol. As you can see this, they have, they use a different um, iPads. So, so what they do is the iPad, they actually, they, they have different information. So they need to think about, okay, if we have this information from this iPad, how could we send this message uh, to say one of the iPad. So if you want to share information with your friends, right? How, how could you share this information? So they, they, that's why they are, um, uh, so this, this is a project about, uh, they are quite, quite happy and actually um, they got the best uh, scores. So uh, for their final year project compared to their colleague, uh, to, the stu uh, to other um, students. So and after I finish, so I decided. Uh, Shen, to, yeah. Shen, uh, I know Stephanie will probably not interrupt um, unless they extend the time. I think we were given up to six thirty. Um, oh, sorry. I, yeah, no, that's. And I, I, it's important that we talk a little bit about the Brock Engineering, uh, so that because it's a new program. Uh, if you can just wind it down, it's. Uh, I have only five minutes to talk about. You know, so. Oh just, no! Please go ahead. Uh, Betty, so please do like, uh, sorry, I uh, didn't, I, I should check out more carefully. Yeah, please go ahead, Betty. All right, thank you. Sorry, uh, Stephanie, for taking over the chairing of the meeting, but I was worried because I know Tabira is probably waiting to make the presentation that people came for. Um, so guys, thank you so much. Cheng has given us a quick rundown. I don't have pic beautiful pictures to share. I mainly want to talk about engineering at Brock, but I will start from the concept of diversity. Uh, when Stephanie started talking this evening, she was talking about diverse background. 
And um, I'd like to share how that plays a role in our new program. And uh, just for completeness, uh, I just, uh, Stephanie already indicated to you where I, I got my undergraduate degree. I won't be talking about my academics, but you may be curious um, when you hear me speaking with this beautiful accent. This comes from Kenya. I was raised there uh, in, uh, I had Stephanie talking about being four members in a, a house of three bedrooms. And I smiled internally because it reminded me of being raised among seven children and having uh, a similar house. And uh, I just wanna say to you that I was raised by my father and mother. My father was a mathematician, uh, elementary school teacher, and my mom was a secretary. The reason why I wanna talk about them is that both my parents never went to university, but they knew the importance of education and uh, they played a key role in who I am today and the choice of subject that I took. And uh, I'd like to share that with the ladies here and the, if they're males, everybody, because whether our kids grow up to become, especially daughters, whether they grow up to become engineers or join any of these technical subjects, really, really one of the key people in their life is uh, the parents. The parents don't have to be engineers, don't have to be anything, but they, if, if you can tell your girls that uh, they can do anything, that they can be mathematicians. My parents didn't know anything about engineering, computer science didn't even exist. And all I know is that my father being a mathematics teacher, he kept on telling me that mathematics is important. He didn't explain why. And so whenever I came back home, he was only interested in knowing how I performed in mathematics. And my mother, uh, she usually told me, if you want your life to be better than mine, I don't know why she thought hers wasn't great because I thought she gave us a wonderful uh, upbringing. Uh, education will take you there. And I religiously believed in my mother. Uh, I worked hard and uh, my father to please him. I was one of those daughters who, uh, who wanted to hear daddy say, you know, and so I do great in math to get that. And this is how I ended up in engineering. I remember when I met, uh, not engineering, actually computer science crossover engineering. Uh, I, I do remember talking to Stephanie, I think last year saying, I have a daughter, she's in grade 12, she's going to grade 12 soon. I don't know if she wants to do engineering, she does. But after speaking with Stephanie, I went back and I said to her, you need to do physics in grade 11. She said, why? I said, because it gives you the options of engineering. And she was like, I don't even wanna do engineering. I say, don't worry, just do physics. And today she tells me physics is one of the best subjects she likes. So what I'm trying to say before I go to uh, Brock is simply to say, we have an enormous role to play as parents at home. If we tell our kids, um, they can be anything, especially the daughters, because they, uh, they need to believe in uh, that they are just as good as boys in mathematics, uh, because that's a foundation and all the other subjects. However, because we've taken too much of your time, I'll just spend three minutes here, yeah, sorry, Stephanie, to talk about Brock Engineering. So you guys, we are very excited that uh, Brock Engineering is going to be one of the newest engineering programs within the Niagara region. Uh, the Department of Engineering only started last year, but the dream to bring engineering to Brock has been uh, uh, there for many years. And I can't talk about that uh, right now except to say that we now have a department of engineering. And one of the key aspects is that uh, we want the Brock engineering to be as inclusive as possible. Uh, basically, we want to bring an uh, engineering education, uh, which aims to balance the concept of equity, diversity, as well as meaningful in indigenization, not just by saying it and putting it on our webpage, but actually, trying our best to do that. And this is already reflected in the kind of hiring we are doing. We are making sure that um, as much as possible, uh, Stephanie mentioned about 30% being gender. So we are trying to see that right from the very beginning, we have uh, some uh, representation from all groups. And I'm highlighting women here given the event today that we hope to at least at minimum have 30% women representation because Representation is so important uh, because if the girls look and they see only male professors, they may assume that's not a department for them. So right now we are aiming, we already have six faculty members uh, at Brock. Uh, two of them are female, so that is 
it may sound little, but that's a big celebration for us. And we're in the process of hiring more. So the kind of engineering we're coming up with is called integrated engineering. Within Canada, we only have two such programs. One is at UBC and the other one is at Western. The key difference between our integrated engineering and what they already have is that theirs was built based on the various engineering programs that already existed, uh, the mechanical engineering, all the traditional engineering, and then they were able to uh, come up with a, an interdisciplinary approach by borrowing from all the existing ones. And Brock is coming up with an integrated engineering like theirs. The only difference is that because we do not have uh, any engineering program, we are gonna actually, uh, I won't use the word custom made, but we have the flexibility to make sure that the kind of engineering we are coming up with is hopefully one that can be welcoming to students who never imagined that they could belong to engineering. So we are gonna welcome students with a wide background. We are not going to compromise, of course, quality because this program of ours, the undergraduate one is gonna to have to go through the accreditation process. And uh, uh, we will have different pathways so that students can go there directly from high school, just as usual. They can transfer from college. They could be working parents who've been taking different paths and now they wanna to transfer to engineering. And uh, uh, because of lack of time, uh, all I wanna say is that the keyword, our program is going to be interdisciplinary, meaning that um, we hope to have the students who finish to have different types of skills. For example, if you've done mechanical engineering, you come out, so you've specialized in mechanical engineering. If you've come up with uh, chemical engineering, like Stephanie, she seems to have widened even without doing uh, integrated engineering based on talking with her, but I think she can, uh, I had a chat with her and she appreciated that the world today is ready for a different type of engineer because if you specialize, and I'm not saying don't send your kids to do electrical engineer to do mechanical, but an example I can give you, if you become so specialized in one area and uh, the company decides that they don't need the engineers now because they are gonna outsource that job, then you have to try and find, but if you've done integrated engineering, uh, you are an engineer, however, your skills are much wider and therefore the idea of transferable skills is much possible. So um, unfortunately, I cannot say too much because I think it, uh, Stephanie, I think I'm, I'm sorry that we've taken longer than we could have anticipated. Guys, I'd like to say that we have a webpage for integrated engineering at Brock. You can find my uh, email there, the Sheng's email, there's all the information there. Please feel free to send an email and um, that's all I can say for now. Oh, wonderful, Betty and Shen, thank you so much. Um, no, what, what really I want the audience to think about is, is the passion that you both have for your subject, for your material, for the life that, that a STEM career has given you. And, and it's nice to see the balance. You know, sometimes we, we kind of only hear focus in one space or another, but um, as we, you know, have started careers, uh, you know, what I love the messaging is, is that, you know, over the period of time, we're going to get into a lot of variation. You know, the world's, I saw a stat today that said like 85% of the jobs in the next 10 years haven't been invented yet. And so as, as people preparing for the phase in our lives, um, it's really neat to think about having that diversity of thought, a diversity of experiences. And uh, I can't wait to see how this program evolves and kind of how it fits into the traditional model of engineering, but also leaves that space to create um, maybe what the future or the newness of the world is that we haven't even invented yet. So thank you both for joining us today, for sharing the opportunity that, that is coming down the pipes. And for those that are used to the traditional engineering model, to keep in mind, you know, the different ways that they're going to be to looking at things and, uh, you know, maybe breaking paradigms is, is really how the world is going to be successful. So thank you both for your time. Thank you, Stephanie. And just one thing, Stephanie, can I just add one thing for the sake of everybody? Um, uh, guys, I wanted to say um, that uh, every uh, artificial intelligence is currently uh, everywhere. And one of the key things we want to make sure our, our integrated engineering is throughout the program. 
And um, so I hope that uh, if you're interested in finding an engineering program where you also get the aspect of AI in, in, involved, uh, please consider us. But otherwise, it's a pleasure to see you all here, even though we don't see. Awesome. Thank you both. All right. So moving on to the next portion of our presentation. Um, am I still sharing my screen? Can you guys see the introduction? Make sure spotlighted. So to the core piece of what we're going to be here for today, I'd like to introduce Tabitha Lewis, who is going to be our workshop leader for the next hour or so. Tabitha works through Brock University's library makerspace, and she provides operational leadership as their coordinator. Tabitha has over 15 years of experience with multimedia software, including graphic design, photography, photo editing, video editing. She loves to work with people and help tap them into their creative genius. Uh, she keeps a space for painting at the Niagara Artist Center Studios and is serving as part of their board of directors. So as she brings us through the next hour, she's going to demystify. She's going to help us use Cricut software to create special personal wearable art, better known as stickers. And I'd like you to say thank you to helping me welcome Tabitha to the stage. And Tabitha, take us away. All right. Thank you, Stephanie. And welcome, everybody, to this workshop. I'm so honored to be a part of this event, um, this Women in STEM event. And I, I am not an engineer, I'm not a mathematician, I'm not a scientist, but I am definitely a technology enthusiast and uh, somewhat of a specialist now that I have been working in the makerspace for around five years, uh, working with 3D printers, laser cutters, um, and all the software that comes with, uh, with those technologies. And um, it's been an interesting journey and an exciting journey to connect with students who um, are in a variety of disciplines and um, various levels of competencies uh, from beginners to experts and still coming into the makerspace with a sense of wonder. So what we're going to uh, present today or what I'm going to present today is a workshop on Cricut Design Space. And we've done a variety of tours, all different uh, types of people come in. And whenever we stop at the Cricut, the, the, uh, the beaming smiles that we see on people's faces, um, you know, it, it really, it, it never gets old. So I'm going to take you through um, the, the basics of how to create on uh, a Cricut machine and kind of uh, like we do with every workshop that we offer in the makerspace, uh, give you a little courage to, to design something yourself versus just being um, maybe a consumer. You can kind of explore how you can create something on your own. So today, how this is going to work, I'm going to be using this platform called Nearpod, and it should have been in your notes. I'm going to send you the link in the chat. So I'll just paste it right now. And it will have a link to Nearpod and also a pin to join. Um, and so just to reiterate that uh, you do have to log in. So if you have a Gmail account, that's going to be the quickest and easiest way. Um, even if you have an Office 365 account, that, that's another way you can log in. However, Gmail is the easiest way. And then once you log in, I'll type in that pin. And I will know that you've logged in successfully um, by seeing a number on my screen. So for the first half of the presentation, I, I'm not going to be sharing my screen because we'll be following along in Nearpod. Thank you, Matthew, for, for reposting the pin and clarifying that. I appreciate it. Um, so uh, I'll be talking, but you'll be following along and commenting in Nearpod. And then once we get to the demo part of the presentation, that's when I will share my screen and actually show you Cricut, um, the software design space, and we'll, we'll keep making that way. And if you have any questions and there is not a chat box on the Nearpod screen, feel free to type it in the chat and I'm sure someone will let me know. Okay, so let us get started. So far we have 11 people 
in the um, Cricut Design space. So I will give everybody another two minutes and I'll talk a little bit about um, the maker space while I wait for the participants to join. Um, I'm not sure if anyone has heard of a maker space, but it is a creative space for people to come in uh, very DIY uh, focused where you can experience technology um, and start creating uh, with, with very low stakes. And so our main reason for creating a makerspace at Brock was to provide users, community members, students, faculty, staff, anyone who walks onto the campus, an opportunity to use technology that they either would not have access to or um, have never considered using before. And they can come in and start making. And if they don't even know how to make, they would participate in something like we're doing today. And they would learn a little bit about how to get started with making. And so what I found is that a lot of it starts with the software. Um, so you have to learn how to use the software and then it can communicate with the hardware. All right, so um, that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So today in the Cricut um, Design Workshop, we're gonna learn about the technology, we're gonna learn about the software and some of the tools. We're gonna explore some design templates in Cricut Design Space, um, explore some project ideas, and we're going to look at customization. So I see 26 people in the Zoom meeting and 14 people in the in the Cricut meeting. So let me know if anyone is having some trouble or um, I'm okay to get started. So Tabitha, when we're looking at the Nearpod, we should see uh, a screen that says creativity and design with Cricut's design space. That's correct, yes. Great. So if we've got that screen up, everybody knows they're in the right space. Um, for those who are anybody having trouble, um, if you've got, uh, um, Google or um, would, is the best login if you're using like Explorer or anything older than that. The Edge it doesn't work very well, so um, try to get to um, to um, the Google software to be able to use Chrome or alternative that might be helpful. Uh, if anybody wants to directly message Tabitha, if you're struggling to get in, or if you just want to kind of follow along with the the listening, that's great too. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll flex a little bit and what I'll do is I'll share my presentation screen uh, just for those that might be having some issues. Um, you won't be able to interact as well, but uh, you'll see kind of what's happening on Nearpod. That way we can kind of get started. Oh, one more person, success. Is that okay, Stephanie, if I share my screen? Yeah, for sure. I think. Um... I mean, really, it's all about new softwares, and I think I love these workshops because they're introducing us to new ways of sharing. Yes. And I think creativity and design really. I like. I'm really excited to see how this works for me. It's new, and so yeah. If anybody's struggling, don't worry about that. This is a, a great safe space learning opportunity to uh, try new things if it's something that you haven't seen accessing, and uh, how Tabitha uses it to uh, communicate and to share and teach. I think I'm excited to see it. So. Um, don't be afraid if something isn't working. We want everybody to come along to the journey together. Awesome, awesome. Thanks, Stephanie. So um, just so that you don't get confused, if you are logged into Nearpod, uh, just stay on your window. And this window that I'm sharing is really for those who are having some trouble logging in. So let's get going. All right, so I need to learn a little bit about uh, the people here today. So. What craft projects have you done or thought of doing? And you can use the little chat bar at the bottom to share your thoughts um, and then just press the send button and um, we can see, everybody can see your ideas on the cork board. So what craft projects have you thought of doing or you have done? Um, all right, planner stickers, some cards. Awesome. All right, these are all really cool ideas. All right, 3D printing mini robots. 
squishies. I'm guessing those are little teddy bears, I think. Stained glass, some cards. All right. Watercolors. Very cool. Yeah, and feel free to give a heart to any of the comments that you think are uh, aligned with you or you think are really cool. Let people know that you've heard and seen their comments. That's very cool. A Wacom tablet and doing some drawing. These are all fantastic ideas and uh, project ideas. This is awesome. So we have a creative bunch here today. Very, very creative bunch and uh, folks that are really kind of, I guess, maybe stepping out of their comfort zone for some of these. Some of these seem like really ambitious craft projects. And when I say ambitious, you know, I think knitting is ambitious. So uh, this is, you know, no shade to the level of tech technology used, I, it, these are really amazing projects. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna move along to the next slide if there are no more ideas and um, comments. I have a, one more question for you. <laughs> Excuse the double questions, but choose any one you like, the more the merrier. Have you used a Cricut machine before? Just want to get a sense of who is in the group. And either of the no's or either of the maybes, uh, I'll, I think I'll get the picture of, uh, of where you're at. OK, let's take a look. All right, so we got a pretty diverse group of people, a little bit on the yes, a little bit on the no, and people are just unsure if they've used the cricket. That's interesting. I have more questions, but I'll save that for after. All right. So the cricket maker, let's take a look at how it works. Um, so at the core of this piece of hardware, it's really basic CNC technology. Um, and for those who are, you know, mathematicians and engineers, you know, CNC technology might um, ring a bell. Um, so in very, uh, in very layman's terms, uh, it basically takes measurements from your art that you design on the computer and it plots it on a graph that correlates to the size of the, the, um, the board in the Cricut Maker or the workspace in the Cricut Maker. So it's taking all the lines and the data and the points that you, you create in your design. And this is all happening in the background. So you're not even really worried about all the technology and all the processing that it's doing, you're just creating. But how um, it works and it works so well is that it's doing a lot of the math and the plotting in the background. So what you leave with is, you know, a fancy sticker or a, a heat transferable sticker for your clothes that you can iron on. And that's basically how uh, the CNC works. Sorry, how the Cricut Maker works with basic CNC um, technology. So let's talk about the tools. So what tools um, are available when we are using the Cricut? So you can see here, um, I tried to show them all, but there, there are more than these. We have pens, we have blades and rotary tools. We have your standard tools for um, applying your material and um, customizing and finishing your material like scissors and tweezers um, and a variety of tools there, things to kind of lift Delicately, delicately your paper or your material off the, the build area. And the picture in the bottom corner is uh, the different mats. So um, we'll, we'll go into the materials, but the different mats provide a different, um, a variety of different grips and strength of adhesive, adhesion for the different types of material. You can imagine that, you know, felt needs a bit more of a sticky material than maybe 
cardstock. So that's what I, I mean. Can I, I just interrupt a sec? Yeah. In the Zoom meeting, we're not seeing the screen for anybody who didn't go over to uh, Nearpod. I'm just wondering if you could resend. Okay. So in the Zoom meeting, you're not seeing the screen? Yeah, correct. All right. It says your screen sharing is paused. So I'm going to stop the share and I'm going to reshare. Do you see it now? Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. So um, you didn't miss much on the previous slide. Um, it's pretty much what I said before. Let's go into the tools. So uh, once again, we have markers, we have blades and rotary tools. Um, we have uh, finishing tools to finalize your, your design. And we have these different colored pads that have different grip strengths um, for the adhesion um, to accommodate the different types of materials that you can use. So um, this is a really great uh, infograph or diagram that I found, and I just want to share it with you. So we have different types of blades, like I mentioned, fine point blades, deep point blades, bonded fabric blades. So there's a lot of different materials that can work with this machine. And some of them are specific to the Cricut Maker. Um, and some of them are um, can be worked kind of interchangeably. So you might be wondering like, why would I choose one blade over the other? So for example, the rotary blade is good for soft fabrics and delicate fabrics, um, such as like tissue paper um, and cork that might tear apart very easily. Um, and the knife blade is used for thicker fabrics such as balsa wood, very thin balsa wood can even be used in the Cricut um, or chipboard. And the deep point blade is great for very intricate details and cuts. So there are various purposes for each blade depending on what you wanna make. Um, but I find that this, the best blade for your standard sticker is your normal fine point blade, especially if it's not that detailed. All right. So materials, we have um, cardstock. We have chipboard. I mentioned a little bit of them just now. We have things like felt, vinyl, right, which is very popular for stickers. And so there's a variety of material, variety of materials that you can get for the Cricut. And um, as long as it fits the, you know, the the dimensions of the board, and it adheres to the the mat that you're using, you can you can use it with the Cricut. So you won't be able to, you know, send a eighth of an inch piece of plywood through the Cricut, but you could probably send a 16th inch piece of balsa wood through the Cricut. All right, so let's talk about project ideas. Some of you shared some really great ideas and um, I, I tried to put some women uh, day focused uh, projects that are above here. And so the projects at the top, you know, kind of represent what we will be exploring today, some stickers. And I just want you to think about the difference um, or what stands out really um, in terms of the images that we're looking at at the top in the circles. What stands out in, in terms of how the images look um, and why they might be best suited for something that is creating an object with a knife and a blade um, or a rotary tool versus something like a printer that's plotting with ink. Um, you know, why, why do you think these designs would work really well for the Cricut? At the bottom, you see some gift card holders for Christmas and some little, I think these are squishies for Easter. So a lot of great project ideas. So like many of you mentioned, we have cards, vinyl stickers, signs, clothing patterns, um, or even just simple heat transfers for t-shirts. All right, so let's get into some active learning. So I want you to uh, go on this screen and in the bottom corner where the, the, the little bar for sharing your thoughts, there's a little icon that has a picture. And I want you to search and find an image that you think would work really well 
as an image um, to work with in the Cricut Maker. So I'll just say that alone. Just find an image, a picture that you might want to work with uh, either as inspiration for your design. And so, for example, I'm going to, you know, in, in honor of National Women's Day, I'm going to type Wonder Woman. I don't remember if that is a DC or um, Marvel character, but I'm just going to type it in. And this is the image that I remember being a very young person. And that is the image of Wonder Woman that I remember. And that is an image that I would think, you know, I can see that on a t-shirt. I can see that on a mug. So if you can grace me with your, your thoughts on an image, and maybe we could stick with a theme with like a Marvel character uh, of an image that you might want to work with in the cricket or with cricket. Okay. All right, these look great. Unicorns, lovely. I love it, I love it. The new Batman is coming out. See a ode to Catwoman. Snowflake, okay, yeah. If you don't have an image, feel free to just type it in. Oh, cute little puppy. Okay, these are awesome. I'll give everybody a few more minutes to share their thoughts. Okay, so as we are searching these things, I want you to kind of keep these images in your mind as we are going to kind of explore um, how to actually move them into something like a, uh, a program like Cricut Design Space and um, con convert it into something like a sticker. What works and what doesn't work? Yes, a little bubbly. That'd be an awesome sticker. So someone's asking, does it need to be in PNG format? No, 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 no. It does not have to be in PNG format right now. We are just getting inspiration. So we just wanna get your idea uh, for what you might wanna make on the Cricut. So I think we have, I think we have everything here. So, um, and I love these ideas. Sorry, my, the hearts cannot, I can't click the hearts fast enough. These are all really great ideas. All right, so I'm gonna move on to the next slide. That's okay. All right, so let's talk about Cricut Design Space. And I'll try to press through this really quickly. So I'm gonna press play on my end and just let me know if you can hear the video um, or if you're able to press play on your end.
Okay, so I hope that played for everyone. Okay, so let me see. It's looking like the sound wasn't shared. So, thank so, you. Yep, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, Tabitha. Um, you'll need to unshare and then reshare with sound. Unshare and then reshare with sound? Yes, and the enable sound is on the bottom left. It's a checkbox. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing. There you go. And then I'm going to reshare, but before you click your item uh, on the bottom, uh, of the share video, sound. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank no you. problem. Thank you. All right. So we're going to click share and we're just going to play it again. Sorry for those who watched already, but it's only two minutes. And you can just put up in up, this up. video, you can we'll give you a quick overview of Design Space, the free design app that comes with every Cricut machine. The main workspace in Design Space is called the Canvas. On the Canvas, you have access to features that let you edit projects, create new ones, have fun with type, and so much more. You can use Design Space on a computer, tablet, or phone when you're connected to the internet and even when you're offline. Before you get started making, make sure to activate your machine you'll be prompted to download the Design Space app and sign in using an existing Cricut ID. If you're new to Cricut, you will create a new one. Always make sure you've selected the machine you're using from this drop-down menu. That way, you'll be sure to get the projects and features that are compatible with your machine. You can browse for projects here. Ready to make projects allow you to either make as is or customize to your liking. Either way, Design Space will always tell you what to do next. To design from scratch, browse images, fonts, and shapes. Search using keywords. Filters might come in handy too if you're looking for something specific. And there's even an option to upload your own artwork. As you create projects, be sure to regularly save your work and give it a memorable title. Every time you sign in to Design Space, you'll always find something fresh and new, not just from Cricut, but also from members of the Cricut community just like you. The best way to learn is to just get in there and have fun. All right, thank you for your patience with the replay. And so, yeah, Cricut is a very fun um, piece of technology. So I'm gonna give you a second, if you haven't already, to create a Cricut account. Um, if you have not created a Cricut account yet, do you mind just um, maybe sending a, an emoji or a signal in the, in the chat and I will know to give you a bit of time. But if everybody has a Cricut account, I'll just keep kind of moving forward. And so um, this is where you would go to create it. So if you click on this window, all right, Amelia, take your time, click on the window, it'll take you to design space. Um, if you're interested in uh, creating an account today, otherwise you can just follow along, that's fine. Um, and you can create account just by logging in and uh, agreeing to the terms. And so, you want to click on that page it'll open up the right link and you'll be able to create an account so i'll just keep progressing while you do that in the background all right so we we shared some photos that uh we really really liked and and had a desire to maybe use in a cricket project so i I hope you can maybe find that again, because we're going to talk about how to convert your images into lines. And you might be like, what? Why do I need to create or convert my image into a line? Well, um, like I mentioned in the beginning, that uh, Cricut is, you know, your basic CNC technology and the information that it needs to actually make your image, it needs that vector or line data. It needs to know how to move across the graph. It needs to know when to go left, right. Um, and so 
if you have an image, it's not impossible, but you need to know that it has to be converted. So most images uh, can be categorized um, in terms of file type as a JPEG. And you'll notice this image, you know, it looks like an icon and, um, you know, uh, it has the word JPEG, um, but you know, you look at it, it's kind of blurry. And that's because the resolution of it is not high enough for the size that it is. And so that is the difficulty that, um, or that is the obstacle that will present itself um, with a, a machine that is looking for line data. If it has pixels that are often found um, in images. So an SVG, you can see the difference. This is a very crisp and clear um, icon, right? And so it's, it, is the, it will forever be the right size because all it, the, all it is dealing with is, um, is line data, so a vector, right? And that's a part of what SVG stands for. And so that means regardless of how big or small, this scalable vector graphic can be used, manipulated, altered in a, in, um, to be used with software like a Cricut or any CNC um, technology because it's not reliant on little pixels, little bits of um, picture um, data to, to make an image. It's actually um, simple lines. And so a vector is basically a 2D, um, uh, basically a combination, like I said, of lines and curves and shapes that are based on math. So from point A to point B, uh, that line uh, is a vector. And a vector image is just, I would say, if you had an image, let's say a painting of someone on the wall, the vector would be like you taking a pencil and tracing around uh, that painting. So the connecting line, um, or even the non-connecting line, just the line that you create around the image, that would be what you might consider to be a vector. So images versus lines, you could see, you know, a raster image, you know, it has all these little pixels. It has uh, these bits of data that don't convert well to something that is looking for, um, mathematical data that fits on a graph. So what we're going to be exploring today, um, once we get into the demo, is how to create um, a, your, convert your image into a vector. So but first, you know, maybe you don't have that creative gene. I want you to search, once again, um, maybe if you uh, can search specifically um, by adding the word vector into your search. So I typed in Wonder Woman, but this time I'm gonna type in Wonder Woman vector and I'm gonna see what pops up. Vector, and I'm just gonna click enter. And you can see, you know, I don't have those very, uh, you know, colorful pictures anymore. I have these very linear, you know, basic shaped type pictures. Um, and so you'll see, I think I really like the idea of making this a sticker. So I'm gonna save this as a sticker and I'm gonna share it. And I think that's gonna be my Cricut themed sticker. That's what I'm gonna work with. So I want you to just share something that you are really interested in, but when you're searching, just add the word vector and notice the difference that you that comes up when you find your images. So I, I, I'm a big fan of the new Marvels uh, series that's coming out now. So I did, you know, encourage everybody to search for a Marvel vector, but you can search for whatever. And I'll give you guys two minutes to just share some of your, your vector searches. I think last time I did a Black Panther search uh, because I thought I really want to make a t-shirt uh, with the Black Panther icon. And if you don't have anything to share, that's fine. We can keep moving on. But if you do have something to share, we will give you a minute to share that. Yeah, but I shared something that says pending approval. 
Okay, let me take a closer look. Maybe somebody else has got the same status. Yes. Let me just close this window. See, it's not giving me my approval window. So I'm going to, I hope I don't lose anybody if I refresh my window, but maybe it'll pop up. Oh, there we go. I just needed to refresh. Okay, I'm liking what I see here. These are all awesome vectors. A little bit of technical difficulties, but thank you, Stephanie, for letting me know. So you can see all of the great ideas. Okay, Marianne's got my back. I got your back. Like it's just, a bit, you know, we're just we're just a supportive group here tonight, right? Like, you know, it's not about perfection, and it's exactly. about you know, put yourself out there. I love it. Awesome. <laughs> we'll all learn together. <laughs> exactly. All right, so Matthew, just to answer your question specifically, um, we're not really looking for format. We're just really in this uh, exercise or challenge. I'm just asking you to search on Google and actually see the difference between what you did before, which was an, just a general image, and what your images look like now when you add the word vector. And you'll notice a very um, outlined looking image that appears. Okay, I see. All right, so you're having some technical difficulties on your end. So, um, but to answer your question about what file type, you know, um, like I mentioned earlier, SVG is probably the best file type to look for when you're trying to find a, a image that works well with CNC technology, because it has the right data, has the right information to work with most CNC technology. So I, if I, um, have a scalable vector graphic, so an SVG file type. I could use it on the Cricut. I can use it on the Carvey, which is a, um, a CNC machine. I can use it on the laser cutter. So this file type is really what we're looking for when we want to um, have ease of use. Oh, I see the taco hat kitten. That's gonna be an awesome sticker. Okay, so um, once again, just to answer your question, it, this is more of a search. So it could be, if you don't have anything um, in the, that's working for you by clicking on this little picture icon, you can um, literally just use the Google search and it will find images that are compatible with, uh, with this specific platform. All right, sorry, I was just answering a couple of questions in the chat. So these are fantastic ideas and we'll keep it moving. All right, so now that you got the idea, hopefully, um, about the difference between the different types of images, let's get into um, creating something in um, Cricut. So all I'm simply gonna do is give you a, a, a more kind of detailed walkthrough about how you might go about creating a sticker um, in Cricut. So, um, this will be very short, but I do want to leave time for questions at the end. Um, so yeah, let us, I'm going to stop sharing and then I'm going to reshare. And uh, go back to Zoom and share my screen. And here we go. All righty. So this is Cricut Design Space. So if you have not yet logged in or created an account this is what you'll see and you know a lot of information is here off the bat um and so what you see at the bottom here are things either that have been made by the cricket community for sale excuse me um or things that are for free and so I like free things. So that's what I look for when I'm searching for objects that I want to use in my Cricut design. But let's say that I wanted to customize or I wanted to um, make something from scratch. I would go up to the top right corner and click on new project. And what that's going to do, it's going to open up this grid. Remember I talked about a graph that uh, the computer understands. So it's opening up this grid and it's letting me know this is where I want to plot and create um, my objects. So 
I am going to take a look at this left sidebar here and I have a lot of really great things. And so the first to um, the first button here actually is if I wanted to create a brand new project and I'm already in a new project. So I, there's no real point in clicking new if I haven't started creating anything. Um, I might want a template. So maybe I am designing something specifically for a t-shirt, a tag or a bowl. So I can click on templates and this will allow me to create on an existing surface to get a better idea. So for example, if I click classic t-shirt, it's gonna give me an outline of a t-shirt. So as I'm designing, I'm keeping the ratio of things in mind, uh, placement in mind, and kind of you know helping me um, think about my design, not as just the image I'm designing, but how it's gonna fit on the thing that I'm designing for. Okay, and so if we go down um, after templates, we have projects. So like it mentioned in that video, maybe we don't want to dive into our creative genius and we want to just, you know, maybe recreate something that from a genius out there, we can take a look at the projects and um, once again, some of these are free and some of these are not free. And so the best way to figure that out is to click on it once and it will um, tell you the cost at the bottom. So if there is a cost, regardless if you customize it or make it, you will have to pay for it. Um, so uh, just keep that in mind. And you have different categories um, of things that you might want to look at. And once again, I'm always looking for free things. So there's my free category. So now I can search for things that are free to remake. Someone made this really interesting face mask with a window and um, I'm like, that's pretty ingenious. So maybe I might want to make it, you know, maybe my goal is not to design. Maybe it's just, I have some fabric that I want to use. So there's a lot of really great, um, projects here, even for inspiration. Um, and just a sh short story, you know, when the pandemic happened initially and everyone was scurrying for PPE, that I came here to find some templates. Why make something from scratch when you need to make it right away? versus just using it as a design that already exists. So this is kind of a quick way to get started. And um, so if we step out of projects and we're really ambitious and we wanna make something from scratch, we have shapes. So um, I could say, you know what, I want to work with a circle. So I'll just click on it once. I, I was dragging and dropping and I can resize the circle. And as you can see, you know, when I drag it, you kind of see the pixels, but once it gets into the right shape, um, it, you can see that it becomes a line. So for now, I'm gonna actually put my circle to the side. And so I have shapes and I have images. Um, so I can once again, search all images or I could be very, very specific. And I'm gonna type in Wonder Woman. That's my theme for today. Um, and I find all these really great things. And of course there are prices beside them. So I'm going to um, show you guys how to start um, making your own designs from, of course, you know, um, Creative Commons, uh, free to use, free to replicate um, items. And I don't think that's an issue unless you plan to, to start a business with it. Um, but if you're just making it for a one-off project, I don't think you will run into any issues. Um, but before we jump there, I just want to click on text. And so text allows you to create a text box and you can type in words. So I'm going to type in Wonder Woman. And I can then resize the box. <clears throat> Excuse me. I can change the font. And once again, there are free fonts and there are not free fonts. And so the easiest way is going to system fonts. Those are always free and you can change the font. I'm going to try my best to resize this so it fits in the window. I don't know if it will let me, but you can see it's a pretty straightforward software. You add, and if we, you don't like what you add, you delete it. You click and drag to resize. Let's see someone has something in the chat.
Um, so good question. Is there a cost to using the software? Um, no, but um, it's kind of like when you find apps with in-app purchases, you can purchase some of the, the resources in the app, but to download and use the software, it's free. And there are tons of really great free resources um, available in the software. So I can do really cool things like curve my text. Uh, and there's a scale here. I just went up to the toolbar here and clicked curve. And I can say, you know what? I want this to go around my circle. So now my text can kind of sit around my circle. And I need now a graphic on the inside. So this is kind of where the magic happens. And this is one of my favorite features of um, Cricut Design Space. I want to upload an image that I like. So let me see if I can do something really quickly here. Actually, I'm just going to um, type in the name of our hosting group today. And I'm going to literally um, save the image of their logo. Don't tell them, I'm gonna save it to the desktop. <laughs> and I'm going to um, bring it into Cricut because I wanna make a sticker out of this um, image. So if you have your own image that you want to try this with, feel free to do the same thing. Just simply save an image. And when I go to upload, I'm going to upload the image that I just saved. So I think I saved it on desktop and there's the logo. And here I drop it in <clears throat> and it's asked me, you know, do I, is this a simple image? Is it complex um, or is it, you know, moderately complex? So I'm gonna say, I want it to be as simple as possible. And I say continue. And because this image was already a, um, a PNG image, I don't have to do much editing. So I'm actually gonna cancel this and show you what I mean by um, much editing. So I'm gonna go back to upload an image. I'm gonna browse my computer. I'm gonna to try to find a more complex image. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing. Let's just go to a website and let's um, stick with our Wonder Woman theme, Wonder Woman image. And I'm gonna just simply take this image of Gal Gadot, save it to the desktop, and I'm gonna bring it into Cricut. I'm gonna show you why working with simple lines is a lot better when you're dealing with making a sticker or working with a material that is literally um, using one image, uh, one material, sorry. So when I click on, when I add the image, it drops it into this plane here, um, this work area, and it tells you the different file types you can upload. So that's an answer to your question, Matthew, again, what type of files does uh, Cricut work with? It works with these up top here. But if I click simple and I say continue, it now wants me to remove what I don't want the machine to cut because it's now taken this image and it's literally created lines out of all the different shades and gradations. And you can see this is gonna be very challenging for the machine to cut because it has all these different details. And that's why when you want to work with an image, it's better to upload a vector image because it has the right information that's going to get you closer to what you actually are looking for. So if I do the same thing I did before and I just literally add vector into my search, And I get my logo that I really want, and I'm going to save it from the internet, save image, and click save to desktop. And I go back to Cricut and I upload that image. See if I find it, my Wonder Woman. Awesome. And I click simple and I continue. Now it says remove background, and it has 
more uh, simple, basic data to work with. I can del literally delete all of the colors I don't want, and it's going to um, it's going to help me make my image into a vector. So once again, this solution is for people and folks who do not have the ability to create a vector image. Maybe they don't have Adobe Illustrator. Maybe they don't have fancy software. And I just deleted the main thing. Um, so this allows you to take an image and I would recommend getting, uh, getting an image that is saved as a PNG or, um, or, a, or an SVG because it's going to give you the best results. And I want to cut this image out and I'm going to say upload. Tabitha, we're just coming up to 7.30. I just want to ask the audience if they were okay if we went for another 10 minutes or so, if your time's all permit. I, uh, I love the stuff you're doing here and I don't want to, it's just, it's awesome. <laughs> we could probably go all night on this for sure. But um, if the audience is okay with another 10 minutes, maybe give me a thumbs up or say yes in the, uh, in the chat. I want to keep going down this path. Right. If not, I, I can, we're really at the end. So um, I could totally wrap this up in five minutes. Yeah, let's say take five and yeah, keep going. Everybody's excited. I know we're all, uh, we're probably all doing our side projects. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, yeah, let's, let's keep, let's keep her going. And then uh, I'll do a quick wrap up and let's say at uh, 738 and then we'll be done oh. in 10 minutes. Perfect. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, and yeah, for those who are following along, that's awesome. Thank you for the reminder, Stephanie, wow, about time. So we've dropped in our image, um, our newly created vector um, into, into the Cricut design space. And you can see, you know, it's, it's in the right format now for the machine to know what to do with it. So I want this image to be cut out of this circle. I don't want this to be what gets cut out. You know, I want a circle with the Wonder Woman logo and I want and I want Wonder Woman around. That's what I want the machine to do. So um, I'm going to actually make this circle a bit bigger. I'm going to ignore the data that's on the side for a while just to make sure I can see what I'm doing. Um, and then I'll make it the proper size later. And I'm gonna resize my image and I'm gonna place it. You know, I want this to be perfect. So I'm gonna highlight both of them. I'm going to go up to the, my toolbar at the top and I'm gonna click align. And I'm going to choose center horizontally. Then go back up to align. And oh, there's a center button. I can just click center. And so now that is in the center of the circle. I don't have to worry about anything. But um, you can see on the right here, I have several different components to my design. So I'll tell you what's gonna happen without showing you is that if I didn't figure out a way to merge these two designs, when I send it to the printer, it's gonna think that these things are not related and it's gonna place them anywhere they like, it, the machine likes. So my goal here is to figure out a way to make these two one. So right now I have three separate things and I have my text here. I wanna make these things one. So I'm gonna make, I'm gonna highlight these again and I'm going to go down to the bottom here in my layer menu here. And what I wanna do is actually click this slice option. And what that's gonna do is <clears throat> it's going to cut out um, an image. And if I were to hide the basic cut and I were to hide this basic cut, this is what I'm left with. So this is not what I want, but I think you get the idea. I think when I was um, cleaning up the image, I deleted an essential point. So it just, uh, it closed the line for me. I don't think I'm able to go in and modify this. Let me see if I have an option to. No, so I don't have the ability to modify this. So for the sake of this example, I'm gonna undo what I just did. I'm going to, I hope you got the concept, but I'm gonna go back and I'm going to upload 
my Black Panther icon that I did in my last workshop. And here it is. And hopefully this will give you the exact um, uh, example that I'm trying to show you. So I'm gonna go to align, I'm gonna go to center. I'm gonna highlight both of these. I'm gonna tell the computer, I want you to cut this digitally. So now once again, if I hide the image and I hide the basic cut, this is what I'll be left with in terms of information for the, for the Cricut to cut. So this is what I want to send to the printer. So I literally can go here and I could delete this and I can delete this because I don't need it. Um, and I could say, you know what? We're just gonna pivot a little bit. You guys, you know, just pretend that this Black Panther icon is Wonder Woman. Um, and I'll keep this down here just for reference. But this is a great example of uh, using the slice function to combine two, two objects together. So another example, maybe I just wanna make a sticker with my name and I'll just say, you know, maybe I'll do my short form tabs and I'm gonna make this bigger and I want this cut out of a maybe a square shape. I can go, or maybe I want a heart. I think a heart is appropriate. I love myself. Um, and I want this to be cut out. So this is now on top. I can go back to my toolbar up here and click arrange and send this to back and do all the steps I did before, highlight them both, go to alignment, click on center. Um, and I don't want this completely centered. Make your adjustments if you get the idea. And then highlight them both again and click on slice. That's the takeaway here. And so now if I hide uh, both of these, this is what I'm left with and I, I can make my unique sticker here. So just to wrap it up, the key takeaway here is that you can either work with a template you can work with a project. So maybe you don't wanna figure out all the design problems. You wanna get inspired or work from an existing project, or you can customize and build your own sticker or logo for heat transfer or for um, a sticker project. Um, you can work with images and search for free images online. You can add your own custom text and work with the fonts. Um, or you can upload a unique image. For example, uh, we made a sticker of, I forget his name, but he was uh, gr the Green Goblin in Spider-Man, uh, one of the original Spider-Mans, and we wanted just a sticker for our laptop. So we, we made a sticker from an image and we made it very simple and we were able to do that in Cricut. So just to wrap up the idea here, I hope you got the basics of this skill that I'm showing you. There's tons of other ways to customize, but this is the most, um, uh, I guess, this is, the, this is the way that you can actually make your own unique designs in Cricut. All right, so I'm just gonna jump back to Nearpod and uh, do a bit of a, a, a wrap up here. I will, skip the test in, in interest of time, but this was just to check your knowledge. And I just wanna get a sense of what you're going to do with this information going forward. Will you experiment with the Cricut? Will you complete some tutorials? Will you explore vector designs? Um, or will you do something else? Okay. Give you a second to do that. But other than that, if you want to take your designs that you've started today and you want to actually print them once things start opening up, you can come to the Makerspace at Brock. But if you're not near the Makerspace, you can visit most libraries. Um, they will have a Cricut machine or maybe you know a friend with a Cricut machine. The designing can be done from anywhere, but as long as you are able to connect it to a machine, you should be able to um, to, to kind of follow through and actually make something with your design. And at the All same right. time, there's also a lot of online tutorials and, and other things, experiments to play with. So um, thank you, Tabitha. Just, I mean, the idea of, of learning anything new, you know, we cut it to about, you know, 45 minutes um, really is an introduction, but the, uh, the possibilities of what you can do 
Um, you can see some of the projects and other cool stuff that people have, have created. And I love the idea of realizing that, you know, the art and the creativity that we, we have within us um, has roots in mathematics, has roots in design. And um, even if you didn't know you were doing STEM or doing design or doing CNC, um, just by having this little bit of an introduction, you could really see uh, the technology and that aspect that, um, that art can bring to the table. And so um, thanks for the introduction. Thanks for kind of showing us the piece. Thanks for bringing Nearpod to me because I love that little bit of an explanation about how to use it. It was such a cool way to, to learn uh, in a group setting. I've never seen that before. And so I hope as an audience, you'll, you'll take this kind of start. We'll hope you made a spark in terms of this, of this space. And uh, definitely take Tabitha for those who live in Niagara. And even if you don't, you know, take her up on our offer, go visit her in the real world. When it's, uh, I mean, next couple of days, I think we'll be able to see things uh, happening really quickly. And then uh, I just wanna quickly share my screen to, uh, to do some real shout outs. Uh, so for those who didn't get a chance to see, uh, see my introduction slide to Tabitha when I wasn't showing, thank you so much, Tabitha. For sharing your love and your passion and, and STEM, but also the way that you're introducing people to technology and the work you do every day has been really important. Uh, thank you to Brock University for sharing the adventures that you're going to be going on as you create new spaces. Thanks to um, Brock Library's Makerspace for allowing us the time with Tabitha. And as well, thank you to our national engineering hosts who facilitated the background of this presentation and um, who really have supported, there's tons of these events going on all month. These are their partners that are in, in, in cahoots with them as they support National Engineering Month. And so if this uh, conversation was great and you wanted more, um, I definitely recommend you go on to nemontario.ca's website and bring in uh, different topics to the conversation. So. Really, thank you for everyone and their time and energy. Thanks for allowing this to go over um, as we know that people are so excited about their own passions and topics. And I hope you leave with a sense of uh, the future and what they can bring. Um, please, if anybody can ask any questions or wants to reach out, wants uh, subject matter or topics or ways to connect to the people you've heard today, uh, feel free to email me, reach out on LinkedIn. And uh, for future events that I'm running, I've got a STEM, uh, Women in STEM Experience Facebook group that can help you stay connected. And so I hope uh, that you have a great evening. I hope this brief introduction was something that allowed you to um, see what was going on in a bigger space and that it helped you connect a little bit to design thinking and design creativity uh, that you can bring into your everyday life. So appreciate your time and have a great evening.